quantum of solace, Daniel Craig's second outing as Bond ruffled quite a few feathers before it even went into production. In the previous movies from both Daniel Craig and Pierce Brosnan, the official tailor for Bond was Brioni. I have covered their style in more detail in my Casino Royale review. If you want to know more about Brioni, click on the link in the top right corner now. In short, Brioni, although Italian, has quite a British look to their suits. But for the second Craig Bond movie, the tailor was switched to Tom Ford, and it caused quite a stir and evolved a scandal. Brioni, although the official provider of Bond's attire in the movies, had no license to produce its own range of clothing when it decided to create a Bond dinner jacket branded with 007 logos on the lining and costing the tidy sum of $6,000. They, usually the ambassadors of taste, filled the jacket with cheesy gimmicks such as a waterproof document holder and a knife case holder in the sleeve. Rumour has it that this angered Eon Productions and they were cut loose in favour of Ford. The big difference between the two designers is the cut. I'm not a tailor, I'm a cutter. Sorry. A tailor sews on buttons and hems trousers. Anyone with a needle and thread in 15 minutes can be a tailor. I studied for decades to be a cutter. What is the cut of a suit? It is the style or shape of the clothing and the way it hangs or drapes on your body. The Tom Ford cut could be described as a more youthful, modern and energetic cut. Daniel Craig was already a customer of Tom Ford and after the success of Casino Royale, it's rumoured he pushed for the Ford wardrobe. Whether either of these rumours or both were true, the result was an immediate switch, and I mean immediate. In the opening scene, Bond is in the middle of a car chase sequence with Mr. White in the boot of his car that runs directly on from the end of Casino Royale. However, despite the immediacy of the action, he seems to have had time to change his clothes. So let's race ahead and take a look at the first Tom Ford costume. Bond is suddenly wearing a two-piece pinstripe suit with blue stripes. Perhaps the speed of the car chase blew away the vest from the Brioni three-piece and scared the stripes into a colour change. The shirt is a lighter blue and the necktie blue and black squares, rather than the honeycomb pattern from Casino Royale. More importantly, the Ford suit has much softer relaxed shoulders than the substantially padded Brioni jacket, and the waist is slimmer, the trousers narrower, giving the suit a more youthful appearance and one that suits Craig's athletic figure. In his first meeting with M, he is wearing a navy wool knee-length overcoat with a suppressed waist, emphasising Craig's muscular build, a theme throughout this movie. The coat has Chiffinelli shoulders. That is, the top edge of the sleeves are raised above the shoulders where they are joined on the coat, a design created by the French tailor Lorenzo Chiffinelli. Underneath, he is wearing a Tom Ford Regency model charcoal grey mohair suit and a white shirt and a grey pin-dot necktie. More on the lack of colour in his wardrobe later. In Haiti, Bond is sporting an already established casual uniform, a black knit wool polo and light pants. In Casino Royale he has on khaki chinos, but here he has chosen white Levi 306 jeans. The dark top and light pants is an excellent casual look for the hot climate. At the opera, Bond is not suitably dressed, so he steals a tux from the costume department backstage. And of all the look, it fits almost like it was made for him. It's a mohair cashmere dinner jacket, which takes its influence from Sean Connery's tuxedo in Dr. No right down to the shirt and tie. And if you thought black tie could only be formal, Bond shows how to look casual in the tux as he discards the bow tie. In the airplane bar, yes, you heard that right, talking to Mathis, Bond is wearing yet another mohair suit, also a favorite fabric of Sean Connery's. Mohair suits are made from a blend of wool and goat hair. Goat hair is quite sturdy and prevents creasing in suits, making it an excellent choice for traveling. And of course, fighting, falling, being thrown through walls and other spy stuff. The suit is a weave of dark and light brown yarn. Mohair suits are usually a two-tone weave, making them an interesting choice for a casual look. At Green's fundraising party, Bond wears a midnight blue dinner suit, made from, you guessed it, mohair. Although he wears a necktie rather than a bow tie. There are many instances of Bond not adhering to the dress code throughout his career. Some criticise him for the slip-ups, but others defend him, as he is, after all, James Bond, and has the confidence to do so. And in the last scene of sartorial noteworthiness, where he tracks down the member of Quantum responsible for Vesper Lynn's demise, he is wearing a black double-breasted knee-length greatcoat, belted at the back. Underneath, a Tom Ford scarf, white shirt, and black and silver necktie are visible. The overall look of Bond's clothing in this movie was designed to be strikingly monochrome, a lot of black, grey and white. This is a good way to design an entire wardrobe and have one look with many suits and coats. It might be a bit limiting for the average person to achieve, choosing only black. But you can still consider limiting the colours of your wardrobe to produce a sophisticated, coherent look for your entire wardrobe. And of course, please like and subscribe, it helps a lot.